just get appalled at. I'm blacker than Nina and the Samoan. I just want freedom and want all these people left alone. How in the world is that champing you? Laughable, you catch an attitude. Glad that you're going back. Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. Today, we're going to talk about getting heat. And that wrestling journalists don't believe in heat. They don't. All right, so where did this, where did this come from? This comes from a wrestling journalist whose name I will not mention. He tweeted out this. And I'm going to read this. I'm not going to put it on the screen. I'm just going to read it. It says, old school wrestlers think you always need to, quote, get heat. But in 2021... That just pisses off the fan base in many instances. Woods could have lost King of the Ring in the name of quote unquote heat. Instead, WWE gave fans what they wanted and everyone rejoiced. Yes, everyone rejoiced. And then, but you, again, it's the now what is missing. For starters, we, we have here a genuine problem with that's just pissing off the fan base. Um, Yes, that's what heat is. The fans are supposed to be pissed off. Why else would a heel be a heel? What else is a heel supposed to do? If he can't piss off the fan base, what is his, what is his purpose? Okay, what, what is his purpose if it's not to piss off the fan base? What good is any of this crap? These people are virtually running the business at some, at, at, to a degree at this point. You know? It's all about feel-good stories and give me feel-good stories. You can't have feel-good stories without the bad times. You need to have bad times in order for the good times to matter. You have to have heartbreak before you can really appreciate joy. These things come in pairs. You can't only have the good. Eddie, <sighs> Xavier Woods should have lost. Because getting him really close to what he really, really wanted... And then snatching it away from him would have pissed off the fans, would have pissed off him, but it would have taken him to the next level. Interesting thing about all of this is there was somebody in the comment section who was like, all of the heat always, always falls on the company anyway, because everyone knows that anytime something bad happens, it's the fault of the company. It's not the fault of the wrestler. So if Xavier Woods would have lost, there wouldn't have been any heat on Finn Balor. It would have been heat on WWE. And I say to myself, look, if you can ruin a good story for yourself, that's up to you. That is not got nothing to do with the company ruining a good story. The company ruins a good story by not doing the right thing with the characters involved and not taking it like the, you're supposed to go on that ride. Okay. That's the part of the character arcs. Always go on the ride, the ups and the downs, the roller coaster. That's part of the story. If you blame everything bad that ever happens on the company, then you aren't invested in the story, right? You're, you're outside of the story. When you watch something and you critique something, you're supposed to be critiquing what takes place on the screen, not what the writers and all these kind of people did. This is the weird thing about movie reviews because now we got movie reviews where everybody's talking about what the, what the director says and what the director thinks and what the writers said and what the writers think. It's like, I don't care about what the writers and all those people think. I look at the show. What is the show telling me? Because the show was the work, right? That's what I'm critiquing. I'm here to critique the movie, to critique the show. What is the show telling me, right? If they poorly tell the story, I'm going to say director or writer X poorly told this story. And then I explain how the story could have been better served. But, you know, so, you know but I do understand that there are people who critique, let's say, Marvel movies. You know, they talk about something like the Eternals. They talk about how awful it is because the director is awful and the writers are awful and everybody's awful. And I say to myself, that doesn't make, just because you don't like the director and you don't like the writers, doesn't make the movie bad, right? You have to tell me what, what was bad about the movie. And then they tell me what's bad about the movie. And I say, well, you know, that, that does make a bad movie. That sucks. That's stupid. You know, <laughs> that's, that's a stupid movie. But if I choose to go into the movie negative already or if i choose that whatever bad is happening to this movie i'm going to blame the writers and the directors and not the characters involved it's like you know uh i don't know who directed infinity war or the, the infinity gauntlets or angle of uh the um the movies but if you blame thanos snapping his fingers and and killing half the universe's population if you blame that on the writers you're a fucking idiot 
All right, it's part of the character arcs. It's part of the storyline. Just because something bad happened to the characters on screen, and yes, the, the the writers wrote it. Yes, that's what happened. But that's not intelligent criticism of what took place here. You saying Xavier Wood should have won the King of the Ring. He didn't win. This is because Vince McMahon hates everybody, and he's a racist, and he's a sexist, and he's yada, yada, yada. Then you're a fucking idiot. That's not intelligent criticism of the product of what we're looking at here. Because you're missing all of this stuff over here that could have possibly have been the reason why something happened. To just say, well, the company sucks. I'm like, okay, well, if that's your version of criticism, that's perfectly fine, but that's an ad hominem, if you want to be honest. You know, that has nothing to do with the work. Their mentality, the characters and the storylines that they're trying to build out of this situation, out of this thing that happened, is what we should be focusing on. It's what we should be looking at. You know, and yes, sometimes you're going to bleed off and say, you know, Vince is, you know, full of shit and Tony Khan's a fucking idiot or whatever, because they're not consistently telling their appropriate stories. But just because you want to avoid heat by saying, oh, the, oh, the heat will fall on the company. Only if you put it there. I don't put a lot of the heat on what happens in the ring on the companies. I'll try to look at, see if the characters are to blame first. That's why they have wrestling matches. Because during the match, usually something is going to happen. The babyface is going to sabotage himself. You know, he's going to fight back, but he's going to make a make a mistake. The heel's going to slide outside the ring. The babyface is going to chase him. He shouldn't have done that. He's going to chase him around the ring. And then the heel slides in the ring. Babyface slides in the ring. Heel kicks him in the head. Like, okay, sure, somebody could have booked that. And I'm not going to blame the writers for the babyface getting kicked in the head. That was the babyface's fault. You shouldn't have got outside the ring and chased him around the ring. Right? And, oh, somebody wrote that down for them to happen. Like, well, if that's if you're going to have that kind of attitude about it, then you can't watch anything. Because anything bad that happens is going to be the product of somebody sitting down with a fucking pencil and writing it down. That means when you watched The Walking Dead and Shane was fucking uh, a man's wife, you shouldn't have been mad at Shane, who was his best friend, or the wife who was married to the guy. You was mad at the writers for writing them the fuck. You're stupid. That doesn't make any sense. I can't watch a show that way. I can't critique a show that way. Just present the story, and I will tell you whether the story sucks or not. I'm not going to make a judgment call on you, or the production company, or the director, or the writer, because I don't like everything that you do. These people have a huge and then what problem because they they feel like everything is supposed to be good all the time. Everybody's supposed to feel happy all the time. Hey, we all rejoiced, man. Yeah. And then two days later, what happened? A week later, what happened? A month later, what's going to happen when you get and they all lived happily ever after? That's the end of the story. That's the end of every story that has and then they lived happily ever after. There is no and then what. That is the answer to and then what. They lived happily ever after. Wrestling as a story continues forever. The Unless this was going to be Xavier Woods, he's going to announce his retirement after winning the King of the Ring. There was no benefit to him winning it, really. You know? Because it's, he's going to the main event. What was the point? But that's just the Xavier Woods issue. And this issue here... We're also talking about Adam Page, right? Hangman. All the AEW fans are saying, Hangman needs to win. He needs to beat Kenny Omega and win the AEW world title. Everyone else who is smart is kind of like, his his boat has kind of sailed. You know, having Hangman beat Kenny Omega would have been great six months ago. You know, it would have been a great story six months ago, but now you have all of these other guys who are on the roster who are bigger stars than Hangman. And uh, the average person is going to be looking at it like, why is this guy world champion and not CM Punk or not da Brian Danielson or not Adam Cole? Why? You know, nobody's going to be as into this guy as they are into the other guys. You should be trying to look at things in terms of business and not in terms of popping people who were there last year. But in, in terms of bringing in new fans. Now, I understand you don't want to do it the TNA route because the TNA kind of did that, too. Oh, hey, we have this new WWE guy. We're going to put the belt on him. Hopefully, this can increase our audience. And it almost never did. Almost never. 
with the with the <laughs> with very 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 few exceptions did that actually work but i think that AEW has two or three exceptions where it's not like uh, Mr. Anderson, you know, who comes to, to TNA and becomes world champion. And most people are kind of like, huh? This is like when Jeff Hardy or Rob Van Dam jumped. You know, these guys are in their prime. WWE fans really, 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 really loved them. And WWE had not fully tapped into their potential. <clears throat> That's what you had with Adam Cole, right? You had somebody that WWE fans really kind of liked. WWE did not fully uh, tap into his potential. And you brought him into your company essentially red hot. Right off of a top angle that WWE put him in. It wasn't like he was sitting at home for seven years and coming in kind of cold. You know, it wasn't like he, you know, he did just lose to, you know, but he didn't lose to the biggest star in the business on, on national TV. He lost to his friend in a match they had on pay-per-view. And then he came over and he was red hot when he came in. Right? Why not have Adam Cole be the guy? There's no good reason why you couldn't have him. Oh, well, we're doing this story with Hangman Page and we don't want to disappoint our fans. Are you serious? Or is your, and I think this typifies the problem with AEW and the problem with wrestling fans currently. It's all about who is here right now and not who could be here. When you have Rampage get 600,000 viewers. I have to put it in its proper context. Let's let's talk about that because I don't want, I don't like when they people try to talk about the time slot. It's like so what, you know? Raw is on from ten to eleven on a Monday. If people aren't into the main event, they just don't watch it, and then the third hour of Raw plummets every single goddamn week. And then people are just talking about, oh, WWE is constantly losing fans. It's like it's almost always the third hour of Raw that loses a ton of audience, but nobody cares about that. It's ten to eleven on a weekday. OK, most people got to go to work or school in the morning. But on a Friday night, if you're already watching wrestling, that means there's two million people already watching wrestling. When Smackdown goes off the air and less than half that audience, if it's two million people, a substantial number less than half tune over to AEW Rampage. That means they know the show, and they know the show exists, right? It's not an issue where, oh, they don't know that the show exists, which might be the issue if you were TNA or Ring of Honor or something like that. People just don't know where to find it. They have no idea you even exist. AEW, they know it exists. They've seen the Washington Post article. They've seen Bleacher Report. They've seen Barstool. They've seen everybody covering AEW. They know it exists. They're choosing to not watch it. You have to ask yourself why. Ask yourself why. Maybe it's because you're not treating mainstream wrestling stars like mainstream wrestling stars. You're treating them like everybody else on the roster. And when you do that, you don't get heat. You don't get heat. Nobody feels the need to watch this fucking show. So, pardon me. If, you know, the old school wrestlers, they think you need to get heat in 2021, but that's just pissing off the fan base. Yes! Piss them off. So what? The ad, you, If you are the hardcore audience, you're going to be there whether Adam Page wins the title or not. Whether, whether Xavier Woods wins the title or wins the King of the Ring or not. You're still watching SmackDown. You're still going to watch Raw. So who gives a shit what you think? That's the big picture here. You're a complainer. You're a whiner. You're a crybaby. You're going to watch this shit anyway, though. The average person is not going to watch this shit anyway. You have to give them a reason to watch this. If you don't give them a reason to watch this, which is the reason you watch this, it's because of fucking heat. You create heat to make people want to watch this. If you don't do that, People don't watch the fucking show. Then your ratings go down. Then you lose advertising revenue. And then you got to get kicked off to TBS or some shit. This is basic fucking. <laughs> it's, it's basic. It's action reaction. You get heat. People pay attention. You don't get heat. People are like, I can skip this. I don't need to see this. I don't care about Hangman Page's story. I don't give a shit. And they've been telling this story for two years. Well, I ain't been watching it in two years. So, I don't know what to tell you. He's not prominently featured. He's not a mainstream star. I don't give a fuck. Okay? So, ultimately, 
what you what have you done? You've taken the mainstream stars that you put on the posters and you talk about them in every interview. We've well, got Brian Danielson and CM Punk. But you're not featuring them in the top spots. You're not featuring them in the show to the point where the average person who hears those names and says, hey, I know that guy. I'm going to go see what he's doing on this wrestling show. Oh, he's wrestling some guy named Aaron Solo on YouTube. I'm not watching that. For what? <laughs> There's no reason for them to be doing that. But if I turn to that channel and I see somebody stomping him out, beating him with chairs and shit, I'm like, whoa, who is this guy? Why is he beating the shit out of Brian Danielson like this? But it'll probably be more like, why is he beating the shit out of Daniel Bryan like this? You know, who is that guy? Then you can maybe hook people into watching the next episode. But AEW, just give people what they want, man. Sure. You gave people what they wanted, which was CM Punk. 1.1 million people tuned in to watch that show. It never got anywhere near it since. You have to ask yourself, was it the right thing to do? No. Was it the right thing to do to have CM Punk on this Dynamite show and not, not add any heat whatsoever to that segment? No, it wasn't the right thing to do. Compare that to what WWE does. They will give people their moments, you know, They'll give a guy a moment here and there, but eventually they're getting right to the heat. You don't see, that's the one thing WWE does that's better than what AEW does. They get sometimes, they may give these guys these 10 minute monologues, you know, but the heat is coming. You know, the adversary is coming eventually. Only in those really bad segments where, you know, somebody talks for 15 minutes and then, you know, nobody interrupts. It's usually like a Charlotte segment where she buries everybody and then nobody touches her. Nobody puts their hands on her or anything. You know, they get away with that. But just about everybody knows the WWE formula. Roman Reigns stands in the ring and talks for six minutes. Somebody comes out there and confronts him. Right? You know that per somebody's coming out there to confront him. Or there's going to be some type of conflict that's going to be created in that segment that's going to lead to the next time you see him. That's storytelling. It doesn't, you don't need to have to have a fight scene, but you do need to have something, a piece of conflict in that segment that has people, hey, boom. And that's, it's just a little bit of heat. It's not a lot. It's not like you have to hit him with a bowling ball every time he comes out there. You don't have to, you know, crash cars into CM Punk every time he appears, but you have to do something. To make people worry about him, to be concerned about him, instead of putting him on a pedestal and saying he's this prized trophy that he's never going to wrestle any matches where he's in any danger. That's bullshit. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to watch that. So are you surprised that these people are the biggest champions of AEW? The people who are like, don't piss off wrestling fans, man. It's like, what? Wrestling is built off of pissing off wrestling fans. The Iron Sheik stood in the ring, hot two, you know, death to America. You're the number one, but you can't piss off wrestling fans. What? So I just slaughtered, burn the American flag. Don't piss off wrestling fans. Roddy Piper is dressed half black. <laughs> Don't piss off the wrestling fans. He was talking about he's the conqueror of the Guerreros, a plan like Cucaracha, calling it the Mexican national anthem. Don't piss off wrestling fans. What are you talking about? Most of you geeks are going to watch this shit no matter what happens in the ring. These people are stupid. And these are the people Tony Khan listen to. And people who are giving thumbs up to this horse shit. That's why AEW fucking sucks. Are you going to give people what they want? Sure, you have to give people what they want. You do have to provide a satisfying conclusion to the story. You do. This is what WWE does wrong. They don't always give you the most satisfying conclusion to a story. You know, the match is in the disqualification or count out because, hey, fuck you. That's why, you know, we're not giving away a pinfall on Raw. For what? Disqualification, count out, fuck you. We'll do it again later. We'll do it again next week, by the way. That was just piss off the fans. And like, yeah, sure, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. You know, we don't know. You won't know until you do it. You don't know how people are really going to respond until you do it. So to back, back up a little bit, Xavier Woods losing in the King of the Ring could have been something that could have been, if you had written it appropriately, 
could have been great for his character. It could have changed his character directly. I'll give you, let's, let's do some fantasy booking. If Xavier Woods lost the King of the Ring tournament and then showed up on SmackDown depressed, head in hand, you know, you know, or rubbing his beard or whatever. And Kofi's like, you know, look, man, you got close. You was almost there. And then Xavier Woods could have talked about how the King of the Ring isn't an every year thing. You know, like there's no guarantee there will be a King of the Ring next year. There is no guarantee that it's ever going to come around again. Like he could talk about all the gaps in between the last time the King of the Ring. This was the first King of the Ring since 2018, I think. Like, he, can he really wait another three years to be King of the Ring? Then he could talk about his dream was, you know, I didn't want to be WWE champion, man. I, I didn't think that could happen for me. I just wanted to be the King of the Ring. And then I get lucky and the King of the Ring is right there. I get to the finals and I lose. Like, you know, and you could just put all that sympathy there. And it doesn't it doesn't put heat on Finn Balor at all. He's a babyface. He just won the match that he was putting in. But you could have told a story where Xavier Woods, where you could have told him, told everybody, this is what he really wanted. And now his belief in himself and his confidence is kind of shaken. You know? And then Kofi's trying to perk him up like, okay, you know what? Maybe you can't be the king of the ring, but how about this? How about we get you a match for the Intercontinental title? You know, how about we do this? How about we do that? How about we, you know, try all of these different things to make you a champion, to make you feel good about who you want to be. And then that could be the story for the next year. And then boom, there is a King of the Ring 2022. And if Avery Woods could be the Intercontinental Champion or whatever and say, screw that, I'm getting in this tournament. This time I'm going to win. You know, if you're going, if you must tell a story, then that would probably be the better story to tell. Is to tell the story of the guy who got close and got it got snatched away from him. And there's no guarantee that there's going to be a next year. There's no guarantee there's going to be another time. You know? Hangman Page, similar situation where, yeah, he can't, but, you know, they already kind of, I think I kind of fantasy booked this already. I think they fucked it up where they came back and they told uh, uh, everybody that he was going to be in that ladder match. And then he just won the number one contendership from a ladder match. Rather than he put his uh, number one contendership on the line in a uh, 10-man tag with the Dark Order and lost. I know he went on that hiatus to, to have the baby or whatever. But if he came back and said, I want to be in that full gear tournament. All you needed to do was in the full gear tournament four days before you were going to have the event. You already have the final set up. So this is what it doesn't make sense, right? You could have had the finals of the full gear tournament on Dynamite and then said the winner of this tournament will wrestle Kenny Omega at full gear. That's four days away. And you have Adam Page work from the bottom and work his way back to the top. He could talk about how, you know, hey, I put it all on the line for my friends. I don't regret it. You know, I don't regret believing in them. I don't regret believing in myself, but it I dropped the ball. Now I'm coming back refocused. I'm coming back better than I was before. No more drinking. No more bullshit. I'm coming back to win that fucking title. And you still could have had CM Punk and Brian Danielson and all those guys on the roster. But you could have told the people who, who weren't there when he was there. This is what happened. This is what took place. This is why I did what I did. This is how I ended up failing. Get behind me in this situation. Now, of course, it doesn't help that Kenny Omega has no fucking heat. That doesn't help. You know, they blew off all his heat. They blew off his heat every fucking week. But you need to be able to tell the story. That's what gets people interested. Heat gets people interested. There are, There is no story without bad guys. There is no story without bad things happening to good people. You have to have bad things happen to good people. And it's fucked up, but that's true. In this world, you need to have cold and heat, light and dark, Good things and bad things. You need it all. You cannot write half a fucking story. You can't do it. You have to give people things that makes them feel bad. Because if you give somebody something that makes them feel bad, they will then feel better when you give them that other thing later. WrestleMania 30 was damn near the perfect show for that very reason. WrestleMania 30. 
Daniel Bryan is fighting from underneath. He has to wrestle two different matches. Daniel Bryan beats Triple H. He gets jumped after the match. Later in the show, the Undertaker streak is broken. The crowd is fucking dead. Nobody wants to see anything else after this. But you end the show with Daniel Bryan being WWE champion. Everybody's happy again. Give people what they want. Daniel Bryan is a WWE champion. But you also give them the heartbreak. Undertaker's streak is broken. That's how you book a fucking wrestling show. It can't be up, 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 up all the time. Because most people are not going to go to the next level with you. As you bring in the next hot star, other people are going to be like, eh, I don't care. What are you going to do with him? Or I know who that guy is. I've seen his face before, but I'm not just attracted to his face. What I was interested in is what he was doing. You know, I loved seeing him punk when he was standing across the ring from John Cena. I loved when he was standing across the ring from The Rock. But I turned to this show. He's standing across the ring from fucking Daniel Garcia. It's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. That's not equal. So, no, it's not going to work the way you think it is. And you got to be stupid to believe that. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Donate to the channel. Thank you guys for your time. And I'll talk to you guys later. Tell me what's worse than learning all that you led to believe was all horse crap. They distort so question that.